Hello and welcome to class. This is Emmet Joyce And today we're going to be looking at another source for downloading precipitation data, temperature, humidity, and any other um, data you will be looking for for any of your analysis. So we looked at uh, the CRU data and we'll be able to process it in the previous video. So this video, we're going to also look at another um, source. All right, so I don't know the reliability of this source, but I know that sharing how you can get it is also vital. By the time you get it, we could also see how we can understand the data itself. But what I'm trying to share in this video is basically how to get the data or how to lay your hands on them. All right, so um, this is more like a disclaimer to not say it's an accurate data or a better data, but I'm only showing you how you can basically get those data. So to kick this video started, uh, the data is called Power Access Climate Data. So basically where we're going to be getting is a climate data, all right? So um, we also click on Power Access Climate Data. We better have something like this. So this NASA Data Access Viewer. So you click on it. So it processes and um, it gives you uh, an access to where you can access and choose the data we are interested in. So once it opens up, um, <clears throat> you're going to have a more like an interface for you to key in what you're interested in. All right, so first and foremost, we have um, renewable energy, we have uh, sustainable buildings, we have agroclear meteorology. So depending on what we're looking for, well, for now, I'm just going to go with um, the renewable energy. And then you're choosing a temporal average. So is it daily, is it hourly, is it monthly, and annual climatology? So let's go with the daily. So now, next is selection area. Um, we'll be downloading. You can also search here, or you can navigate to your country. So I'm searching the real Nigeria. So it's going to take me to Nigeria. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to click on this. So we have this coordinate already of this place. If you have a coordinate, you don't really need to start. You can just easily add it. All right. So now we've added the X and the Y data. What is next is we select the time extent. How long do you run this data? Now this data is dated back to as far back as 1981. So I was going to select from there. And uh, let's say January, January 1st. And then I'm going to do this one to the current year. Since they are daily data, we can actually uh, obtain um, data to today has been 20 seconds, so let's say to 20th. So I'm going to add this data from January 1st, 1981, all the way to uh, February 20th of 2024. All right, so red frame out of this data we're interested in, or are interested in either. We can just with this next CDF, that is the data we use, the data format we use when we're downloading the data from uh, the CRU. They has come under the net CDF, which you have to go to the multi dimension in ArcGIS before you can be able to import it. So with CSV, you'll also be able to uh, have it on Excel and prepare it. And then I actually don't know what this geos sound format is and uh, I also don't know what this ASCII but I'm a familiar with this and this CSV so we're about to go with the CSV format 
All right. So here we're selecting the parameters. The limits of the parameters are 20. So the climatology period has the most parameters. All right. So it's more like you document them in a folder. So when we double click, you are going to have. So let's say we're interested in temperature of two meters. We click on temperatures. We're also um, interested in uh, precipitation and humidity. You double click on it. And uh, yeah, so we have this. So am I related in, we're not interested in, okay, let's say you're interested in also the humidity and then we're interested in precipitation. All right, so next we are going to click on parameter definition. It's going to take us to another side where we're going to make a, a few selection. So we're going to make some little selection of um, some of the parameters, define what each of the parameter is, and then we will. Um, so parameter dictionary. So it displaces all what is to it in the parameters. So uh, let's say we're looking at temperature or precipitation. Let's look at maximum temperature and see. Um, there are quite a lot. So let's just pick something to uh, get over this. Let's look at maximum temperature. Is there something of that nature? We have something that like precipitation corrected, okay? Or well, precipitation sum. Let's let me look at this precipitation sum, all right? And uh, once we've done that, we will go back to here and uh, we're going to click on submit. So this is going to process the whole data and give us the file to download. So, um, so we have an output file which is in CSV. So as you click on this, it's going to come back as a comma delineated. So you click on save in the folder you intend to have we see. So once that is done, we have para point daily. So let's click on it to open it. So the details are in scatter mode, I guess, because this is having the a write up to summarize how the data is. So we have to root this to understand how the data is, and then you also have to take your time and prepare this data. So you can see the data in dailies from 1988 down to 19, and so and then also down to 2024. So you can see the uh, daily uh, precipitation. Now this is precipitation, and this is uh, temperature. So we have to also sit down and prepare this data. But what I do not understand about this data is that I'm not seeing the longitude and latitude. So I don't know if uh, it is hidden somewhere or I also don't know how we're supposed to use this data without an X and a Y. So uh, this is just a we to show how you can get this kind of data on a daily basis. But I do not guarantee. Okay, it has, okay, it only has a longitude and a latitude of a station, okay? But then how do we now really process just a longitude and a latitude? So it's trying to say that this whole data is for just a longitude and a latitude. So I basically don't really understand much about this data, but, uh, one of my research, I've come across this, so I feel like sharing so that we also have an idea. So if you have much uh, knowledge about this data, you also don't hesitate to share with us so that we also can also get and learn from and see how this data can actively uh, help all of us in our day-to-day geospatial -day analysis. So thank you for tuning in to Energy Geospatial today. Uh, but don't forget to also uh, like, share, and comment on our video, and then always refer a friend that needs energy special analysis to tune to our channel. And thank you very much. Till I come your way next time. Bye bye.